In this task, I'll add the data set containing the refugee and IDP population information. So I'll begin by adding the UNHCR data set. I'll browse to my lab data, select the layer and click open and open. This data set contains two attributes of interest. Let me open up the attribute table and we can take a look. If I scroll to the right, a lot of columns, there's a column called refugees and one called IDPs. Refugees is the number of refugees living within the country and IDPs is the number of internally displaced persons living within the country. So I'll close the attribute table. And I'd like to take a look at the descriptive statistics of the refugee field to get a feeling for its form. So I'm going to go to the vector menu to analysis tools and open up the basic statistics tool. I'll use this dialog window to run basic descriptive statistics on the refugee field. So I'm going to choose my layer, UNHCR assisted IDPs and refugees by country, and my target field is going to be the refugees column. And I'll click OK. I can expand this so I can see all, all the data. And in reviewing these statistics, take note of the mean, the standard deviation, the minimum and maximum values, and the median. Because the median is significantly lower than the mean, that tells us that the data is negatively skewed. The standard deviation value seems reasonable, if not a little large. And finally notice that the min value is negative 99. In this field, negative 99 represents a country with no data, or a null value. Since negative 99 is numeric, it's being included in the basic statistics and is skewing our data. Additionally, the max value is more than nine times the standard deviation. This makes the maximum value seem like a prime candidate for being an outlier in these data values that we should handle separately. So I'm going to close this, and I'm going to open up the attribute table for this layer again. I'll scroll over to the refugee column, and I'll click on the header to sort this data. Note that the largest value here is almost twice as large as the next largest value. It turns out that Pakistan is the country with the largest refugee population. Because it's so much larger than the rest of the data, we'll treat it separately for classification and statistical purposes. Additionally, we should exclude the negative 99 values when we run our basic stats and classification. So let's do that now. I'll clear this selection and close my attribute table. I'm going to right click on this layer and from the context menu choose filter. And this opens up the query builder window. And I'm going to enter this query. Admin is not equal to Pakistan and refugees is not equal to negative 99. And I'll click OK. Entering the filter here is the same thing as going into the layer properties and entering a, a feature subset here. So now Pakistan and the countries with negative 99 refugee values are missing from the map and the attribute table. So now let's rerun the basic statistics. I'll go back to the vector menu, analysis tools, basic statistics. I'll choose my UNHCR layer and the refugee column and click OK. Note that the stats have changed quite significantly. The n value is reduced from 177 to 150 countries, which means that 27 countries were filtered out. While the mean stayed roughly the same, the median increased by 1,569 and the standard deviation increased by 38,000. These set of statistics give us a better understanding of the nature of the data and will help guide us when classifying the data. So now let's classify the refugee data. I'll click OK to close this and open up the layer properties for this data set and go to the Style tab. I'm going to choose, instead of a single symbol rendering, a graduated rendering. I'm going to use the Refugees column. I'm going to click this Change button and click on Simple Fill. Put the border width at 0.3. Click OK. I'm going to choose a greens color ramp. Choose a mode of natural breaks, jenks, and click classify, and click OK. Notice that there's quite a bit of white on the map that's a bit overpowering. Additionally, Pakistan and the negative 99 countries are still missing. So we're going to reintroduce and symbolize the missing countries while removing the white class. So I'm going to double click on the layer to open up the properties, go to the general tab, open up this query builder, and clear 
my filter query and click OK. Now I'll move to the Style tab and I'll uncheck Link Class Boundaries. This will allow me to introduce gaps between the classes. Since the first two classes only range from 2 to 123,000, which is within the first standard deviation, I can combine those two classes and reuse the lowest class for the negative 99 countries. So I'll double click on the value for this lowest class to open up the Enter Class Bounds window. I'll set the lower value and the upper value to negative 99 and click OK to set these new class bounds. Now I'll double click on the values for the second lowest class to open up the enter class bounds for that classification. And I'll set the lower value to 2.0 and click OK so that now encompasses the original two classes that we had. I'll double click on the color for the negative 99 class, click on simple fill, and I'll set this as a gray color so it looks different from the refugee data. Visually a different hue represents a different type of thing on a map and no data is different from data. So I'm going to choose the fill and open up the color dialog for this and I'll set this to a hue of 223, a saturation of 10, and a value of 65 and click OK. If I hit apply I can see this change. Now I'm going to click add class to add a new class to the style and I'll set this class to represent Pakistan. So I'll double click on the values for this class and I'll change the lower and upper value of this class to the value for Pakistan which is 1,621,525 and click OK. I'll symbolize Pakistan as a maroon color so I'll open up the simple fill color properties for this class choose color and enter a hue of 4 a saturation of 100 and a value of 40 and click OK and click apply and I can see the change on the map. So let me review this classification as it stands now and I have three observations here. First, the labels don't reflect the classification anymore. You can see the values column and the legend column are different because I've changed the values and I've unchecked link class boundaries so the values in the label or the legend column have not updated. Two, they're overlapping class boundaries. So which class does 301068 belong to? This class or this class, since it's included in both. And three, the class boundaries represent no gaps between the classes. For example, the class boundaries do not always represent actual data values. So I'll address all these observations by changing the class boundaries to represent the actual minimum and maximum values and be updating the labels to represent the new class boundaries. So let me close this and open up the attribute table for this. Scroll over to the refugees column and sort it descending. And the reason I want to update the labels to represent the new class boundaries is by sorting this refugee column in the attribute table I can see that the lower boundaries for the top three classes are all wrong. 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 5 and 301068 don't actually exist as values in the attribute column and 613104 is the upper boundary for the previous class. So I'm going to change these to represent the data a little bit better. So I'll open up the layer properties for this layer again and I'm going to adjust the lower boundary values for the top three classes. So I did that just as we had done with the other classes, just double clicking on each value set and changing the lower value according to the lab. You'll do the same thing in, in the lab on your own. And now that all the classes are set, I should update the label field to reflect the changes I made. I can do this by just entering my cursor in the legend, and for this first one, I can type in the value for Pakistan. And this will allow the legend to represent reality for the map reader. It'll indicate the value and the country that this, this class has been pulled out specifically to represent Pakistan. Instead of negative 99, I can change this to no data. And for the other columns, I can, have, I can correct the values and enter thousands separators so it's easier for the map reader to read. So I've readjusted all my classes. I've also gone in and edited the legend so that this will represent reality to the map reader. And in the next task, I'll style the IDP data.